Hello everybody, this is Electro Llama. Last time I taught you how to build a simple oval shaped layout like this, where you have a lift hill, a turn, some hills, and another turn back to the station. And remember that you have the turns at higher heights so that the train will move slower and avoid lateral G's. You can see this ride has decent stats, but one downside to this layout is it tends to be very long especially on wooden coasters, which have long required length. So let's say you want to build a coaster in this section. Right? You'll see that there's not enough room for a long skinny layout like last time. But we do have a little bit more space in this direction. In the simple oval layout, you have the same size turn on each side, so things line up nicely. However, when you're sort of free building, you might find that you're different distances away from the station that you need to connect to. So this is where RCT becomes sort of like a puzzle. So basic uh, small turn is two by two. You'll see that this piece connects nicely. Medium turn is three by three, so we need to be six miles away from the station for it to fit. Lastly, the large turn is 4x4 four four when you build two pieces. So you need to be 8 tiles away for it to fit. Let's say you're some intermediate distance away. You can't connect with two large turns or two small turns. However, you can mix and match them. So we want to be in between a large and a small turn. So we can do a large turn, which is three by three, then a small turn, which is two by two. And just a small piece to connect to the station. In this new wooden coaster, if we have two small turns, We'll go back to the simple oval layout, but if we want to make more space, we can try doing a medium turn. This will occupy tiles uh, one space over. When we get to the other side, we have some options. If we do two small turns, we'll actually fit nicely alongside the station. Alternatively, we can do two medium turns. That'll also put us one tile over from the station, but this might get in the way of our entrance and exit. So you can see how the second track fits in here nicely. However, we encounter a bit of a problem when we want to get back to the station. You can see that if we do two small turns, we won't actually fit. You can also make use of S-bends. For example, this one, which is too small, you can use S-bend left, and then two small turns. This gives you one extra tile space. If you're one tile away, a nice trick is S-bend, small turn, and another S-bend. Has a nice finishing look. If you have two S-bends, you can actually replace them with a nice wide S-bend using the large turns it a little bit cleaner looking. So S-bends are pretty useful if you want to change your position by one tile to make things line up. And the other option is to use a mix of different turns to get where you need to go. So sometimes it's good to think about building backwards to see where we want to end up. So if we do a, two small turns back to the station, we actually want this row of tiles here. So we can aim for this row using whatever turns we can. Now that we've decided where we want to go, we can use the appropriate turns to connect to that track. Two small turns is too small, so we use an S-bend to make a little extra space. It's a little bit tricky to get it fit, so we might have to adjust the track. If we didn't build backwards, we wouldn't know we have to change this hill here 
would have just gotten stuck at the end. So I'm going to do a few small bunny hills at the end. There we go. I want to connect to this track at plus one. And we include some brakes so it doesn't go through this turn too quickly. We still elevate the turn um, so that it reaches here to silver speed. Looking at our overall layout, you'll notice it's basically two oval layouts that are nested inside each other. So this layout turned out pretty good. It has decent stats because it's long enough to satisfy the requirements. You'll notice that I still keep the turns at a high elevation, so it doesn't have too many lateral genes. In this case, it's below 2, which is great. The most you want to have is 2.8. Low lateral G's keep the intensity down. So yeah, that's a nice compact layout. Let's look at this other coaster that still has a basic out and back layout, but a little bit more freeform. You'll see after the loop we didn't have much flexibility, so we used a small turn. However, this raises the lateral G's uh, beyond 2.8 resulting in really high intensity. This is where bank turns come in handy. You start it by pressing this button here. This gives you into bank turn mode. And so you do the two turns, then you unbank, and you can continue with the track. So this has the same size as a small turn, however the lateral G's are comparable to the next size turn, medium turn even though it has a smaller area. In general, it looks better having bank turns, and it also reduces the lateral Gs and allows you to take those turns at a higher speed. After making that change, you'll see that our lateral Gs are much lower, and we have decent stats. I went ahead and banked the other turns so that it takes at higher speeds. You can see lateral Gs are now below 2, and you can see how that affects the intensity rate. It's usually good to aim for lower intensity than excitement for a nice balanced drive. Going from the basic oval layout to something more freeform, managing track space can turn Roller Coaster Tycoon into a bit of a puzzle game. However, with a bit of careful planning on where you want the track to go, uh, then you can have a lot more flexibility when building rides. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Next time we'll go into a little bit more of coaster physics and aesthetics. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you next time.